this machine can handle what's next. Release the Kraken. All right, so the turning is complete, and now it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. We're gonna do some heavy milling on this part, and we're also gonna do some full five axis simultaneous tool path. It's gonna be really interesting to see how well this machine handles a part that weighs this much when we start rotating this thing out in space. Let's get to it. Now the first thing we're gonna do is mill a pilot hole in all of our pockets. Now this is gonna be about 1.8 inch diameter and about two and a half inches deep. So for that, we're gonna use a Harvey 1TE that is one inch diameter and three inch length of cut. Now, you've seen us to use this tool a thousand times and this part is a real testament as to why we use this tool. Because you're gonna see, this thing's gonna throw sparks the entire time it runs. So to a seasoned machinist, you might see that and say, oh, that tool's done. Those edges are completely gone. But in reality, this tool is so tough that when we get done with this, it's still gonna look brand new. So it's gonna come in and rough all of these holes before we rough the pockets out. So this is why you see us use the Harvey 1T so much because it consistently outperforms our expectations every time. You simply can't kill this tool. Obviously that's why Titan called it the zombie mill. It just doesn't die. It's a zombie mill. And we call it the zombie mill. This is the zombie mill. Zombie mill. <laughs> Next, we're gonna come in with a Harvey 4, which is an eight flute tool, and rough out our pockets. Now, this tool has really been optimized for titanium, but I find that it works awesome in steels. So it's gonna blow through this 4140 like nobody's business, and we're gonna bump this up to about 210 inches a minute to rough these pockets. As you can see, we got some beautiful blue chips coming off here. You know, Barry's always saying that he has the bluest chips in the shop. Metal chips bring all the boys to the yard, and my chips are bluer than yours. But I think I got him beat here. Once this tool has done all the roughing of the pockets, I'm gonna use it to come back in and finish the floors. And then we'll switch to a different tool to finish the swarf milling and all of the five axis work. Now there's something cool that I didn't show you guys in the last video, so check this out. Now all chucks like this has a certain range that the jaws can move. So the last thing you want is to have a giant part on here like this and run out of stroke and you not really realize it. Because if you don't have a good grip on this, you do not want this thing coming off this chuck. So what Shunk has done is they've put these two little pins on two jaws that you want to see that being flush. If it's not flush, if it pokes out at all, then you know that you're running out of stroke, which means you're not going to get the full clamping force of the chuck. So that offers you a little bit more peace of mind to know that you've got a good clamp on a part and you're not gonna throw it out of your chuck. To finish this, we're gonna use a Harvey 2, which is a five fluid end mill, and we can see what kind of finish we're gonna get on these pockets. Now 
all of these pockets have tapered walls, so we're gonna have to swarf mill everything. And technically there's a big enough corner radius that I could use a one inch tool the same as I roughed with, but there's not that much room there. So that means that it would have to do a very small arc in the corners and that would have to do a huge rotary move to try to keep up with that feed rate. And I know that that's not gonna be able to achieve that. So I'm gonna step down in size to a three quarter inch tool to finish these pockets. That way we can get a little bit more motion and smoother tool path in these corners. That way I can maintain my feed rate. And if you're interested in learning exactly how to use the Swarf Milling Toolpath in Mastercam, check out these videos where I show you the step-by-step -step process using different tools. Maintaining our program feed rate is extremely important when you're finishing because any type of slowdown or even pause is gonna be reflected in your part. So you're gonna get a bad surface finish. So we really wanna keep our feed rate as close to our programmed feed rate as possible. So by stepping down to that smaller tool and getting that smoother motion is really gonna help with that. Now, another thing that's gonna play a part in that is a really cool function that a Siemens control has is called orientation smoothing. So as we're doing a five axis path, we know that the orientation of the tool is having to change all the way around that pocket. Well, we can turn on orientation smoothing with our Siemens control, and that's gonna filter out any bad orientation move or big orientation move from one point to another, and it's gonna make our five axis motion a lot more smooth. Now I'm gonna cover that in a future video where I only talk about the smoothing commands on a Siemens control. So if you wanna see that video, or if you wanna learn about another function that the Siemens control has, let me know in the comments below. So we're gonna come in with that same tool and chamfer the top of all the pockets. Now this was incredibly easy with Mastercam because I used their multi-axis D-Bird tool path. Now this has quickly become one of my favorite tool paths because it makes things like this so simple. Hope this machine can handle what's next. What's next? What's next? What's next? Release the Kraken! Next, we're gonna put this machine to the real test. We're gonna come in with Kinemetal's FBX drill, what we like to call the Kraken, and we're gonna see if this spindle is able to push this through this 4140. Now, if you look at the torque specs for this machine, we don't actually have enough torque to run this drill at a lower RPM. So I'm gonna to have to run up to the high end of the surface footage that is recommended for these inserts in order to get enough torque to be able to turn this tool. I gotta go check and make sure I didn't bite a hole in my pants. Bruh. Now one thing you'll note that as this tool is running, we're getting long chips. Anytime you're drilling a hole and you're getting long stringy chips, that means your feed is not hard enough or feeding fast enough to break that chip up. When you're drilling, coolant is another one of those things that can actually help break that chip up. Whew, 
that was nerve wracking. I can't believe that actually worked. So now that the cracking's through, we're just gonna come back in and clean these holes up a little bit, and then this part is complete. video I said we we're going to see how well the DVF 8000T was going to handle a part that weighs this much and as you saw we spun this thing rotated it all over the place and with that much weight with the part the chuck and all this machine it didn't even know it had it on the table so I'm really impressed with the functionality to this machine and how well it was built so I can't wait to keep running this machine and see how much we can push it I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a like and subscribe so you can see more content just like this in the future. We'll see y'all next time.